Hello everyone and welcome back to Applicable Tech. In today's video, as you can see, we're going to make a computer. I'm not going to do a build guide, however, I, I'm not a teacher. I'm just going to whack all these parts together and see what sort of benchmarks we get out of it. This will be for my personal rig, the 3950X going in it, of course. I've not used it yet, I'm actually very, very excited. We've gone for a 1000 watt power supply, the EVGA G3 Supernova. 80 plus gold, um, I went with the recommended cooling solution, uh, which is the X62 Kraken, not the X63, the new one. I'm not, I kind of like it. I like that you can see the readouts and things on there of your temps, but I'm not overly concerned with RGB as a general rule. He says, whilst holding some ML, ML120s, now I'm putting these in because I had them, so why not? I also have the, uh, the Commander Pro or whatever it is you call it. Uh, I've gone for the 2080, uh, the Founders Edition. I already had this graphics card. It was my personal rig, so I'm just going to reuse that because that thing's a beast. Um, the clock just hits over 1925 every single time and it's not advertised that that's so happy days with that. In terms of storage, I do have a two terabyte mechanical drive, I just don't have it out on here, it's just a WD Blue, just for random storage of games, things like that. For a scratch disk, I'll be using uh, the SSD6 from Intel, it's kind of quick, it's not the, the best uh, NVMe drive on the planet to be fair, but it, it does the job, especially as a scratch disk, and I've gone for the uh, 970 Evo down there as well, why not, that's where I'm going to boot from, I like my computer to be nice and snappy. Now, in terms of why I'm building this computer, I was initially planning on the 10980XE, but this build was planned way before uh, the end of 2019, and it just kept getting delayed here in the UK. I saw videos on YouTube in America saying that it had been released over there in around November time, but trust me, they weren't touchable in the UK until well into the 2020s, so I ended up going with the 3950X. Again, difficult to get. Um, they weren't many in stock, but once they were, I just snapped it up. 750 quid, so about $1,000, so not the best price to be perfectly frank, not the best price at all. Right, let's get whacking it all together and see what we come out with. everything from the table into the Anades cube. Uh, it's the case that I went for, it's very very good. Nice, uh, lots of room for cable management it's, as you saw at the back. Lots and lots of space, nice little hard drive cage, like I said I put the WD Blue into there but the machine itself is running very very well. It is a beast, it absolutely is. The rumours are true, the 3950X is a monster. I did a mild overclock with it, nothing too major. Uh, I literally just raised the, uh, the V-Core to around 1.4 volts, not around, bang on 1.4 and change the uh, multiplier quite high. I'm at 4.375 at the minute. I haven't messed with anything else yet. And the run I'm running, as I said earlier, is only 3000 megahertz. So not great, 
not great at all, but I will upgrade, it will be better, but let's see what we get anyway. I've done Time Spy, we've gone over R20, I did old R15, just for posterity, and we can compare it to the 8700K. 80, I know it's appalling, not a fair competition, but I just want to see. I also ran Tomb Raider, why not, just to see what we could get out of that. I love that game. Anywho, let's crack on with that. Uh, it really should be noticed, everyone. Um, I am, in fact, running OBS in the background to record this, so I'm, I'm not expecting the finest of all scores, but the result I show will, in fact, be the result of a test I've run. Oh, my word, look at that. There's so many squares. It's fantastic to see. It's just eating through it, eating through it. I'm very, very happy, very happy with that. But like I say, I am running OBS, but the, the score that I will show is a score that I'll get without running OBS in the background, just to try and give you a, a true reflection of what the score actually is. The actual video, you couldn't even see the cut. I'm quite pleased with that, actually. Quite pleased. But as you can see the difference, look at that. That's the 48 core uh, Xeon at the top. I'm very, very happy. We've absolutely mullered our own previous score as well. It's only a mild overclock. But here we go. We'll move on with Time Spy. Now, with Time Spy, I couldn't run OBS. Um, it just wouldn't record, uh, believe it or not. But look at, there you can see the spec. You can see the speed I'm running at. I've not done any overclock to the graphics card itself. To be perfectly fair, I don't feel I need to with the Founders Edition. But there's the score. Look at that. 11.29.6. Oh, I'm just spilling over my own words. I'm quite pleased. Look at the bloody CPU score. That is spectacular. I'm very, very happy. Very happy. This thing actually is just a, an absolute beast. Absolute beast. We're nicely leveled up. Very happy. We can push that. We can push it into there. So onward with Tomb Raider. Now, it does look a bit choppy. I did manage to record this through OBS, but it didn't like it, to be perfectly frank. I had everything set to high, but in 1080p. The frame rate, though, is a lot, lot higher when I'm not recording at the same time, and it's definitely a lot less choppy than this. I'll just skip through the different or relevant scenes, just so you can see that it was run. I suppose with this, the proof is in the pudding. Just look at the top left corner. I know... With me recording in 30 FPS for the sake of this video, I'm sure that's having an effect. And also, OBS was recording in the background at 60 FPS, whilst the game itself is in excess of 120. I mean, look at it on this scene. I mean, this is notoriously high at this point when you're on the benchmark, regardless. But it is a very, very pretty scene. Now, the Tomb Raider benchmark itself isn't the most accurate. I'm sure most of us are aware of that. It doesn't necessarily give an accurate representation, but in terms of testing your own equipment, if you've run this test before, then I, I suppose it's, it's totally fine by that definition. Now, I was just having a look to see how this would fare in terms of my use case, and honestly, I, I'm very, very happy. Very happy with, with the way that this has turned out. The results are absolutely massive. I think we'll probably just skip to the result now, and then we'll jump over to R15, just to get a comparative view, I suppose, against the 8700K. But again, R15 will be run whilst OBS is recording, so don't expect the greatest of all things there. So what's that for Tomb Raider? 118 FPS with graphics set to high. I'm very happy with that, but let's have a look at R15. I'm most intrigued. As you can see, I've already got a few scores on the doors, uh, just to give you a comparative view. However, there's only one score in there that's running at the same spec as I've actually got this overclock to. Like I said, it was only a mild overclock. I just edged my way towards it, but ended up using 1.4 volts, which is remarkably high. But as you can see, that's the score when I'm not running OBS. I'm very happy. If you look lower down in the list there, you'll see the 8700K looking also lonesome down there. So there you are, everyone. The rumors are true. This thing is an absolute beast, an absolute beast. The overclock I did was remarkably mild. I'm confident I can get it to 4.5 across all 16 cores, which will be absolutely monstrous. The Gigabyte BIOS, it's okay. The overhaul that they did a little while back is very, very good. It's still not quite to the, uh, the extent of an Asus board, though, to be perfectly frank. But I will find my way around, and I will get it overclocked very, very well. So, like I said, the rumours are true. This thing is a beast, an absolute beast, and the title was not clickbait. So, do like and subscribe, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.